Sahana Vavatu, Sahana Bhunaktu, Sahaviryam Karavavahai, Tejasvi Navadhi Tamas Tuma Vidvishavahai, Om Shanti Shanti Shanti. Vakratunda Mahakaya. Surya Koti Samaprabha Nirvignam Kurume Deva Sarvakarishu Sarvada Saraswati Namastubhyam Varade Kamarupini Vidyaram Hamkarishyami Siddhir Bhavatume Sada Samasta Janakal Yane Niratam Karunamayam Namami Chinmayam Devam Satkurum Brahma Vitvaram Narayanam Namaskritya Naram Chaivanarotamam Devim Saraswatim Vyasam Tato Jayamudiraya So we are in Mahabharata and we left off last week in what was called Udyoga Parva. And in this Udyoga Parva, there was a lot of attempts to make peace, lots and lots of attempts. A Brahmana was sent to the Kauravas to make peace. And then a message back from Sanjaya was sent. And then finally, they sent Sanjaya back to the core of us with a message, even if you just give us five villages. Rightfully, we, we you know, are the inheritors of that kingdom. But even if you just give us five villages, it's fine. And, you know, Duryodhana just absolutely refused to the point that Bhagavan Krishna even went there as the ultimate messenger. And he said, and you know, when he goes to Vidura, he tells Vidura, listen, that which is taught by the mind, that negativity, which we think with in the mind, that can still be stopped. The action can still be stopped. And I'm there to stop that action. Duryodhana is thinking of this, but I'm, the, I'm here to stop the action. And Vidura said, you know, I really don't think he's going to listen. Bhagavan Krishna says, I'm going to do whatever I can because they should know that we are doing whatever we can to make peace. And sure enough, Bhagavan Krishna goes to that brilliant, beautiful assembly. And in that assembly, everybody's seated there. And they, Duryodhana wants to entertain Lord Krishna and offer him a meal. But Bhagavan Krishna always chooses to eat with Vidura. And luckily, because Duryodhana wanted to poison him. And when they're in the assembly, Duryodhana, he smugs, you know, he just snobs everyone away. Bhishma was talking. Drona was talking. Even Dhritarashtra at the end came and said, Duryodhana, stop this war right now and make peace. And Bhagavan Krishna spoke. And Duryodhana snobbed all of them. And it is then when Gandhari Devi called her son and said, come back. You know that this, this war, you will not win. Wherever dharma is, there will be victory. You are going against Krishna and Arjuna. There will not be victory in this war. You need to please give them the, the, their half of the kingdom. So Gandhari Devi also, she tells her son, so at the end, 
Dhritarashtra and Gandhari Devi, both of them do turn around and they do tell Duryodhana, but he still does not listen. And he even plots to kidnap Krishna. And when Dhritarashtra hears about this, he's so upset at how can Duryodhana do such a thing? And Bhagavan Krishna displays his Vishwarupa Darshan, but only very few can see. And those that can see know the glory of Bhagavan Krishna. And with this feet, he leaves. And we saw he leaves. He leaves after showing his glory, his Vishwarupa Darshan, uh, after showing everything that is actually in him and that he is the Lord of the universe. He leaves after this breathtaking sight and he goes to see Karna. And it is there where he reveals to Karna and he says, Karna, you are actually a Pandava. You are actually a Pandava. And it would be my joy if you fight with them. If you fight with them, fight on their side because they are your brothers. You are the eldest one. Yudhishthira will be following you from behind. Everybody will be listening to you. You will be like their commander. Please go and fight with the Pandavas. They are your brothers. and They will surely take you back. And it is here where Karna says, I cannot do such a thing. I cannot do such a thing, Bhagavan Krishna, because I already gave my word to Duryodhana. He said here, I want you to keep this a secret to the Pandavas. Don't tell them that I'm their brother. Don't tell them because if Yudhishthira knows that I'm the eldest brother, he's not going to fight. He's not going to fight because the kingdom belongs to the eldest brother. And if I'm the eldest brother, Yudhishthira will not fight because the kingdom won't be his. And not only that, but if you say, if I fight, if I fight, I will give the kingdom only to Duryodhana. So better don't put me in that side of the Pandavas. I will give it to Duryodhana. I know you are saying that Kunti Devi is my mother. Surya Bhagavan is my father. But it is Radha and Atiratha who took care of me. They took care of me. They nurtured me. I consider them my parents. And Duryodhana is waging this war on the fact that I'm on his side. He's waging the war on the fact that I'm there on his side to fight. And so if I say that I'm not fighting, then what will happen? And he says this war, it's like a, a, an ocean which is impossible to cross. But yet they've made me a boat and I will not let them down. And he says, oh, Bhagavan Krishna, I do see negative omens. I know there will be defeat of the Kauravas, but I gave my word to Duryodhana. I gave my loyalty to Duryodhana. I see that there's on the Pandava side, all the beautiful, nice omens are coming. And on the Kaurava side, all the negative omens are coming. And there's a long list. You know, it says that all the beautiful and nice birds are coming to the Pandava side. All the vultures and these ill-sounding birds are in the Kaurava side. In the uh, Pandava side, though they don't even beat their war drums, you can hear the sound. In the Kaurava side, they're beating the drums. You can't hear any sound. There's no effect. He says, I see all of the omens. I know what's going to happen. But yet, I'm going to fight with Duryodhana. And it is this where we look at Karna's character. You see, when we have certain values in life, values you cannot say are always good. We have to say the value directed towards what? For example, Karna had loyalty and loyalty is a value, but loyalty towards whom and towards what? Loyalty towards Adharma. So that is called a misplaced value, a value that's directed towards the wrong ideal or the wrong means is a misplaced value. It's no longer a value, it's a vice. 
So he had this loyalty, he had this deep, you know, commitment to the Yodana, but please see who you're committed to. If somebody is committed to someone so destructive, someone who's going to bring so much adharma into this world, what kind of commitment is that? Can you even call that loyalty? Can you even call that commitment? So he had this misplaced value. And for some reason, he couldn't see past this. Not only did Bhagavan Krishna talk to him, but also Kunti Devi went to Karna. Kunti Devi went to Karna. And you know, it is at this point where Kunti Devi, she finally summons up the courage to face Karna. All this time, she had been keeping it a secret and she did not tell anybody. She did not come out with it. And perhaps if she did reveal the secret, things would have been different. But she summons the courage to tell Karna. And Karna says, I know. I know you are my mother. I know Surya is my father. I know all of this. But please know that I need to fight for Duryodhana. I have given my loyalty to him. And she said, you can come. You're welcome to come to the Pandavas. He said, no, I will not come with the Pandavas. But I promise you, I will not harm the Pandavas. Your Pandavas, I will not harm them. You, O oh mother, will always have five Pandavas. Either you will have Yudhishthira, Bhima, Nakula, Sahadeva, and Arjuna, or Yudhishthira, Bhima, Nakula, Sahadeva, and Karna. I, you will have five Pandavas at the end of the day. The fifth one will either be me or will be Arjuna. But I promise you this much, you will have five Pandavas. And with that, Karna gives his word and he is set to fight. And this is how Udyoga Parva comes to a close. And when we see this in Udyoga Parva, you know, we just start to analyze the different people, what, what's going through their minds before we get right into it. What's going through everyone's minds? What's going through Vidura's mind? Vidura just gave an extensive uh, sermon to Dhritarashtra, Vidura Niti. He feels like he's done everything he could. He's so much advice he's given, so much he's said, not only then and there, but throughout the years. But he feels like it's falling on deaf ears. And he has no choice but to watch the downfall of his brother and his brother's children. And that is the most painful thing for a family member, for a sibling, for a child, is when they advise somebody and that person doesn't take that advice because they're not able to see and they have to watch that person fall. When we have to watch a person fall and, and, and knowing that they could have prevented it is the most painful thing. And that's what Vidura has to go through. So much Vyasa also warned Vyasa has to watch the whole, he has to write the whole downfall of his family because they refuse to listen. What is going through Dhritarashtra and Gandhari's minds? Now they are, you know, they are wanting to stop Duryodhana, but he's unstoppable. But the thing here is, it's too late. It's too late because as we said, the blindness of Dhritarashtra, it, it, signifies his blind attachment to Duryodhana. While growing up, he just let things happen. And sometimes he even encouraged it. And when we are attached to somebody, we cannot see clearly. When we are attached to anything, we will never make a clear decision. Know that for sure. The minute you and I are attached to something or someone, we will never make the right decision in that regard. How do you know you and I are attached? 
if we are afraid to lose that thing or that person or if our source of happiness is in that thing or that person we are attached the love misplaced is attachment and it is this attachment of dhritarashtra that let him let duryodhana live the way he lived which is a very very sad thing so that's going on through dhritarashtra that's going on in in gandhari gandhari devi's mind she did stand up she tells her son straight in the face but it's also too late what's going on in the mind of duryodhana he doesn't want to listen to anybody he is bent on war and that's the only thing he sees now what's going on in the mind of bhishma how is it that someone like bhishma someone like drona someone like kripacharya how is it that they are going to fight with the kauravas how is it that they're going to fight on that side what happened with bhishma so you remember the whole story back then about bhishma's vows he took a vow that he would never marry he took a vow that he would never be king and he later took a vow that he will be loyal to whoever is on the throne of hastinapur now who's on the throne of hastinapur now dhritarashtra and therefore he vows loyalty to dhritarashtra because i told you back then they were always used to taking vows and their vows meant everything and anything they wouldn't go back on their vows now please see here when we take a vow we have to see the dharma in that vow if you're vowing to be loyal to whoever's on the throne please make sure that the one's on the throne is practicing dharma if the one who's who's in the throne is practicing adharma then how can you and i be loyal to that person it's like when we sign a contract in a company to work for somebody we sign saying that yes we will work with the company and this is what the company's vision and mission is but if we see the company is being corrupt then we should leave we should break that because that is being loyal to adharma we did make a vow we did sign a contract but how can as a person of dharma we be loyal to adharma that is a huge mistake and at this point bhishma values his individual vow over dharma i made this vow so i must follow it but what about dharma it is almost like there is a subtle ego there that because i said this i have to follow it it's not about you or your ego it's about what's happening to the whole hastinapur what is the right thing to do and so bhishma unfortunately sides with the kauravas also because for the same reason with kripacharya and dronacharya is the reason that dronacharya and kripacharya give is the kauravas gave them their salt the kauravas they've lived with the kauravas for so many years and karna also says the same point he says i've lived with the kauravas for 13 years and they took care of me therefore i need to fight for them drona and kripacharya feel indebted to the kauravas they feel indebted because the kauravas gave them a place to stay the kauravas gave them livelihood gave them security gave them wealth gave them everything so they feel indebted to the kauravas and because it is this obligation or this feeling of indebtedness they want to fight with the kauravas and this is a very sad thing because yes if somebody has given us so much yes we should be grateful but again if they're coming to the point of adharma then one should have the dharma to stand up against that very beautifully in this text called sadhana panchakam 
there is this line called naishturyam utsrijyata means from janakripa from the people we should avoid taking favors avoid taking favors as much as possible from people why because whenever we take a favor we are under obligation we are under debt and it's as though they can ask us something they can ask us something and then we feel like we have to give they asked us so we have to give so this is you know and and it could be anything they could ask us anything but we will still feel oh you know they did so much they did this for me they did that for me and they'll also remind us yeah we did this for you yeah we did that for you now you better pay back so whenever we get entangled into asking so many favors asking these things from other people what happens is they will ask in return and we will be obliged to give and sometimes it can be adharmik so puja gurudev in that commentary of sadhana panchakam says make sure we always give more than what we take in every single interaction with every single person make sure you and i always give more than what we take it doesn't need to be money a, a, a smile time quality talent something in every single interaction make sure that you and i are debt free that we always give more than what we take because we don't want to be under this obligation and this obligation can feel like such a bondage it's a great bondage i mean you all know what it is to have a debt to pay it is a great bondage on your back when will this be over when will this be over it's there isn't it so like that this dronacharya kripacharya felt that way and because dronacharya sided with the kauravas naturally his son ashwatthama also sided with the kauravas and i and you all know the story of shalya the uncle of nakulan sahadeva he also sides with the kauravas so you can see all of them there there is something that's keeping them in the core of our side so unfortunately they have to be there and now the pandavas have at least pandavas have themselves they have the king of virat they have drupada they have bhagavan krishna the most important thing so they have we have the pandavas we have the core of us and now we will get ready to enter bhishma parva okay so first let us see now where is bhishma parva okay let me share this with you so that you can see clearly so in mahabharata there are 18 main parvas as we said so we have gone through adi parva sabha parva vana parva virata parva udyoga parva was the one about effort about making peace or trying to make peace the next one is called bhishma parva hmm? so this is the next parva that we are seeing why is this called bhishma parva because it's bhishma parva bhishma actually becomes the commander in chief of the kaurava army he gets anointed crown the commander in chief of the kaurava army and drishta dyumna drupada's son he gets the commander in chief of the pandava army drishta dyumna remember is the one who is uh, born to defeat drona hmm? so this is what happening now this uh, war is a huge 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 thing so they all go to kurukshetra they find a field away from you know people away from people away from houses and all of that because they are going to war so they need a huge field and that field is our kurukshetra just there very much today and in this kurukshetra 
both the Pandavas and the Kauravas, they set up their tents. They set up tents with lots of supplies, with weapons, with, I told you they have the Akshohinis, they have the horses, the elephants, everything. They have all their emblems, their flags. They have all the people, they're setting up tents, they're getting ready, they're blowing their conches, they're beating their battle drums, and they're getting ready for war. Now, before this whole war starts, they fix certain rules for war. So certain rules for war are like this. I'll show you so you see. They fix that fight should be between equals. So for example, uh, somebody who's holding a maze should fight with someone who's holding a maze. Someone who's in a chariot should fight with someone who's in a chariot. So equal strength also should fight with each other. And you can only strike someone after they accept a challenge. And one who's seeking refuge, one who's retreating, one whose weapon is broken, and one who doesn't have an armor, they cannot be struck. Hmm? So these, you know, basic, basic rules they had for war. And also, they had that, you know, those who are playing the instruments or those animals who are helping, they should not be harmed unnecessarily in the battlefield. So they set up their war, they, they hold. They... Now, what happens? What happens is Vyasa enters. Vyasa enters and he goes to Dhritarashtra. He says, oh, King Dhritarashtra, I can bless you with the sight to see this entire war. And Dhritarashtra says, I cannot do it. I really, really cannot see the war. I cannot see the death of everybody. You bless Sanjaya. So Bhagavan Veda Vyasa blesses Sanjaya that he should be able to see everything that's going on in the war. Whether it's unmanifest, manifest whether it's in people's minds or in people's words, in all the sides, everything known and unknown will be seen by Sanjaya. And no weapon, nothing will be able to strike Sanjaya. And Sanjaya will never know exhaustion there in the battlefield. And so Veda Vyasa, he blesses Sanjaya. Sanjaya, this is what it is now you can see the war. And so what happens is Sanjaya, uh, he goes into the battlefield and after 10 days, he runs, runs, runs to Dhritarashtra and he is just furious. And Dhritarashtra said, what happened? What happened? And Sanjaya says, I'll tell you what happened. This happened on the 10th day. And then Sanjaya starts to recap the war. Now, what happened on the 10th day? We will see now the war based on Sanjaya's recap. Hmm? But that 10th day was a very, very, very difficult one. What happened? So Duryodhana, first of all, he routed his armies and he says, listen, the main thing everybody should do is protect Bhishma. Why? Bhishma told Duryodhana, listen, I am not going to fight Shikandi. Hmm? I, 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 will be, I will be unconquerable. You put me in the battlefield, I will destroy the Pandava army like anything. But I will not harm the Pandavas. I will not do that, but I can destroy their army very, very easily. And I cannot be put against Shikandi because Shikandi is a woman. And you know this Shikandi story. She is Amba. So you remember from back in the day that Amba, Ambika, Ambalika. So to me, she's still a woman. I, I cannot fight against a woman. I will lay down my arms. Do not put me in front of her. And Bhishma tells Duryodhana, and if I am not going to fight, if Karna fights, 
<laughs> because this Karana is always comparing himself to me. I'm not going to fight if Karana fights. So Karana has to lay down his arms and cannot fight until Bhishma is defeated, if he's defeated. And so uh, Duryodhana says, the whole army, the only thing you need to do is you need to protect Bhishma. Don't do anything else, just protect Bhishma. And uh, so he tells everybody this. And then Arjuna and Yudhishthira, all of them, they appoint their commanders for the Akshohinis and they're getting ready to meet at war. And what happens? What happens is Duryodhana is like a very uh, arrogant, arrogant person tells Bhishma, oh Bhishma, oh Bhishma, look at what's happening here. Look at who we have to fight. And this is what starts to happen now in the Bhagavad Gita. Huh? That uh, first chapter of Bhagavad Gita is where this uh, Duryodhana becomes very, very arrogant and says, look, there's Bhima, there's Arjuna, there is, you know, Bhagavan Krishna, Yudhishthira, there's all these people on that side, and this is their strength, and this is what they can do. And then Duryodhana says, but look at us, who we have on our side. We have you, O Bhishmacharya, we have Drona, we have Ashwatthama. And he was just speaking all nonsense. You know, when people are insecure, they talk very loud. Huh? Empty, empty vessels, they make so much noise. So when people are very insecure, they tend to talk a lot. They tend to be very loud. They tend to say so many things because they're insecure. They want attention. They don't know what to do. They don't know how to handle themselves. This is not the case all the time, but a lot of times. So Duryodhana was actually inside very insecure, very insecure that he was talking so much. And this Bhishma said, you know, this guy has to keep quiet now. And so Bhishma blew his conch. He blew his conch. And that was the first call of war. So the Kauravas initiated the war. Bhishma blew his conch. And when he blew his conch, oh, the Pandavas all blew their conches. Everyone started blowing their conches kettle drums, everything was playing. It became so loud. It was millions of people in the battlefield and everyone is just ready for this war. And everyone is going at each other. And Dushasana starts and he advances at Bhima. But now before all of this, Arjuna says, Bhagavan Krishna, take me, take me there in the middle. I want to see everybody. I want to see all of these people. We're blowing our conscience. Let's see who I have to fight. I'm ready. And he goes there with such a strong, strong stature, ready to fight. He says, show everybody to me. Take me right there in the middle where I can see them. What happens? Arjuna goes and he sees Bhishma, Drona, Kripa, Shalya, Ashwatthama. He sees all of them and he is broken. His lips are quivering. His hands are shaking. His head is spinning. He sits down and he drops his Gandiva bow. He is unable to pick himself up and fight. He says so many things to Bhagavan Krishna. What are we doing? How can we fight with our grandfather, with our teachers, with our uncle, with our friends? How can we fight with them? I don't want any kingdom. I would rather go live on Piksha. And even if we win this kingdom, what's the use if they're all going to die and we cannot share it with them? So many people will die in this war. So many people will be affected. Families will lose each other. I am not going to fight. I don't want to fight. And Arjuna goes on and on and on. And we will see when we do the first chapter, it's all Arjuna saying all the reasons why he doesn't want to fight. 
He doesn't want to fight. And Lord Krishna patiently listens to him, listens to him quietly. And then finally, he tells Lord Krishna, O oh Bhagavan Krishna, I don't know what to do. You are my teacher. I am your student. Excuse me. I am your student. You please tell me what to do. And only at this time, when Arjuna surrenders to Lord Krishna and says, I am your student, you are my teacher, Lord Krishna becomes very happy. He says, now you're ready. Now you're ready to listen to me. And it is that after this point, Lord Krishna gives him the true message of the Bhagavad Gita. And that really speaking starts from chapter 2, verse 11. And he tells them, the wise never grieve because you are the eternal Atma. Nobody ever actually dies. No weapon can cut you. No fire can burn you. No water can wet you. You are that Atma. You are always there in everyone. If that same Atma is in everyone. And that is eternal. That can never be destroyed. So who are you killing? And Lord Krishna gives him the entire 700, 701 verses of the Bhagavad Gita in that battlefield in Kurukshetra. And Arjuna patiently listens to the whole Gita by Lord Krishna. And after he listens, he tells Lord Krishna, my delusion is gone. I am ready now. And he gets up and he picks up his bow. And he says, Lord Krishna, I'm ready to fight. And so Arjuna gets back his courage to do his dharma. And just when about Arjuna wants to get up and go fight, Something happens again. What happens? Yudhishthira takes out his armor, walks barefoot to the Korva's side, and everyone's looking at Yudhishthira. What is he doing? Why is he going to the Korva's side barefoot, no armor? And all the Pandava brothers are following him because Yudhishthira is the eldest and they follow Yudhishthira. They're following Yudhishthira. And they're looking at Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna says, I know why he's going. And he just smiles. And they and everybody is just aghast because they said, Are the Pandavas surrendering? Are they surrendering now? And Yudhishthira goes. And the first person he goes to is Bhishma. He says, Bhishma, I am seeking your permission to fight with you because in our scriptures it says if we seek blessings from our elders in all of our endeavors we will prosper and especially if we're fighting against them and Bhishma said I bless you you have my blessings and in fact actually it said every day Bhishma and Drona would pray for the victory of the Pandavas. They were, you know, Bhishma and Drona, they were divided in their hearts. When we're divided in our hearts, we will never win a battle. They're fighting for the Kauravas, but their heart is for the Pandavas. So like this being divisive inside, no battle can be won. If my heart, my hand is in the same battle, then I can win. But if my heart is in a different battle and my hand is somewhere else, I will lose. Bhishma blesses Yudhishthira. And he says, what can I do for you? Yudhishthira says, Bhishma Charya, tell us how you can be defeated. You're unconquerable. You have Icha Mrityu. 
means you have the power or the will to die whenever you choose. How can we defeat you? And Bhishma said, in the right time, I will give you the secret to my death. But may you be victorious. Then Yudhishthira goes to Drona and says, Drona, Dronacharya, I seek your blessings. Please bless me. Dronacharya says, may you be victorious. And please tell me, what can I do for you? And Yudhishthira says, tell us how we can defeat you. <laughs> and Dronacharya says, when I'm with my weapons, it's impossible. Nobody can defeat me. But I'll tell you something. If I hear very troubling news from a credible source, then I will be broken and I can be defeated. And so Yudhishthira says, okay. Then Yudhishthira goes to Kripacharya, seeks his blessings, and Kripacharya also blesses him. Now Kripacharya is a problem because he's Chiranjeevi, which means he lives forever. Very hard to defeat him. <laughs> so you have Bhishma. Bhishma first he goes to who can choose when he dies. You have Drona who cannot be defeated. He's the master of weapons. He's their own teacher. And he's the master of all the divine astras itself. Then you have Kripacharya. Chiranjeevi cannot be defeated. Then you have Shalya. Shalya is very strong. And Yudhishthira asks blessings from Shalya and Shalya blesses him and says, you know, what can I do for you? And Yudhishthira says, if and when you become the chariot of Karna, you please taunt him so that it becomes difficult for him to defeat Arjuna. He says, Tathastu, I bless you. Now, that was the, the moment, the game changer. The game changer of Mahabharata is when Bhagavan Krishna gives Arjuna the Gita and when all of these elders bless Yudhishthira. That means victory is theirs. That simple, you know, sometimes we take blessings lightly, you know. Now we don't need to ask blessings. We don't need to seek blessings. It's okay. In our culture, when we have the blessings of our elders, we can go very far. So in every endeavor, every big endeavor, we always have to seek their blessings. Because, you know, don't think only monks do tapasya or brahmachari do tapasya. People who are in grasta ashrama, how much tapasya they do. And that uh, the, the lady of the house, when she blesses, how far that blessing goes. The man of the house, when he blesses, that also goes very far. So when we get the blessings of our elders, we go very, very, very far. And in fact, it's we live on their blessings, actually. Hmm? We might think that we do things on our own, huh? that we are successful on our own. But we live on their blessings. Oh, every time you all bless me, I'm only able to walk further because of that. So that, uh, that was the game changer for Yudhishthira. Yudhishthira does something else before the war starts. He says, now, does anyone want to change sides? If anyone wants to change sides, you're more than welcome. We will accept you. And everyone's looking at each other. And there is one person that wants to change sides. Who is this? Yuyutsu. Who's Yuyutsu? Dhritarashtra's 102nd child. Huh? That son that he had uh, with another lady, that son is Yuyutsu. And this Yuyutsu comes on the side of the Kauravas, uh, of the Pandavas. He comes on the side of the Pandavas. And Yudhishthira tells him, I'm glad, I'm glad that you have come to this side because somebody will be there to perform the final rites of all the Kauravas. Meaning Kauravas will be no more and at least Yuyutsu can perform the final rites. And so now, Bhagavad Gita has been given, blessings are there, and now the war 
starts. Now what happens here? So in Bhishma Parva, this Bhishma Parva is extremely, extremely hard 10 days of fighting. Everybody is just going at it together. And you know, some one, I'll, I will give you a few notable instances so you can see. On the third day, Bhishma just goes out of hand. He is consuming the Pandava army like anything. He, he's, he's fighting at his best. Huh? He's not uh, holding anything back. He's consuming that Pandava army like anything. And what happens is Arjuna goes to fight with Bhishma. And Bhishma says, the only person who can defeat me is Krishna and Arjuna. Arjuna goes to fight with Bhishma. Still, again, Arjuna's arrows are very soft on Bhishma. Now he's not doing his best. Bhagavan Krishna just tells him, shoot, shoot at Bhishma. This Arjuna is just, you know, very soft. And Bhagavan Krishna gets so upset. He takes a weapon, he jumps out of the chariot and he charges at Bhishma. And at that time, Bhishma is so happy. And he says, Bhagavan, if you are going to give me death, I am so happy to die at your hands. Bhagavan Krishna gets that weapon and Arjuna goes to him and says, stop, I don't want you to break your vow. You took a vow that you will never pick up a weapon. And he hugs Bhagavan Krishna's knees and he says, stop, 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 don't go. And Bhagavan Krishna says, then you better fight. And so Arjuna starts fighting and fighting and fighting. And again, Bhagavan Krishna withdraws. And so you know, again, the, all the fighting, it goes on and on and on. And then, you know, so many duels, different, different duels were fought. I'll show you some. So if you, so you can, you have an idea here. They, the, the one thing is that they had to stop after the sunset. Hmm? So here we go here and you can see just a little bit so that you have an idea what's happening. I won't tell you all the details, but Bhagavan, this is notable things. Bhagavan Krishna's anger. Huh? Uh, Arjuna became terrible after that. Huh? He used uh, an astra and he destroys the Kaurava army. Then Kauravas are desperate. In day four, Bhima was very, very terrible. So they sent Bhagadatta. This Bhagadatta had a very terrible elephant. And this terrible elephant just kept on attacking everybody and attacking everybody. But Ghatot Kacha was also there. And he came to the rescue. Then we have... So Ghatot Kacha became the hero. Then we had Ashwatthama versus Arjuna. So imagine Dronacharya was watching Ashwatthama and Arjuna. There was thrills in his body seeing all of that. Then we had Abhimanyu and Lakshmana, the son of Duryodhana. Abhimanyu also was just very, very valiant in that war. Then we had Bhima. He felt that his chariot was not fast enough. So he got down with his mace. And he kept on defeating everybody with his mace. That Bhima really, really fought a lot in this war. Then in day seven, Shalya had to fight with Nakula and Sahadeva. But that was very hard. No? The uncle had to fight with his own nephews. But he was very pleased with their valor. And Bhagadatta and Ghatotkacha. And this Trigartas, they are a huge army that kept challenging Arjuna all the time, all the time, all the time. And they fought with him. And then both sides were suffering really, really heavy losses. What happened then in day eight? Day eight, 
Duryodhana was very upset. And he told Bhishma, what is this? You know, you know, maybe Karna should fight. <laughs> maybe you should lay down your weapons. You are not even defeating the Pandavas. Nothing's happening. Maybe you should lay down your weapons. Bhishma got so upset. He got so upset. He said, I will fight at my most terrible tomorrow. And on the ninth day, something overtook Bhishma. He was like a forest fire. Nobody could defeat him. He was undefeated and he kept vanquishing huge, huge slots of the Pandava army. And Lord Krishna told Arjuna, fight with him, fight with him. Again, Arjuna was being soft with him. Again, for the second time, Lord Krishna picks up a weapon and he charges at Bhishma. And Bhishma is so happy and says, if I die at your hands, I will be so, so happy. And Arjuna again says, I'm not going to let you break your vow. I'm not going to let you break your vow. I will fight. And Arjuna fights with Bhishma. But they suffer great losses that day, the Pandavas. And that ninth day, they were, the Pandavas were crushed. They didn't know what to do. So Yudhishthira said, what do we do? At night, he tells Lord Krishna, I think we should ask Bhishma. I think now is the time to ask him how to defeat him. So at night, they went to the Korva camp. And this was very natural, huh? Because after sunset, everybody was okay. <laughs> you know, during the wartime, everybody was fighting with each other. But after sunset, everybody was okay. So they went to Bhishma's tent and at night and Bhishma said, I bless all of you. I'm very happy to see you. And Yudhishthira said, you are too strong. And Bhishma said, yeah, you cannot defeat me. Nobody can defeat me as long as I have my weapons. Yudhishthira said, tell us how to defeat you. And Bhishma said, look, the only way you can defeat me is if you put Shikhandi in front. Because I will not fight against her. I see her as Amba. I will drop my weapons. You put her in front and you defeat me with that. And then Dhyadishra said, I'm so sorry. I have to ask you how to kill you. And Bhishma said, that's okay. I'm ready to die now. I am finished already. Enough, enough is enough. I am ready to go. And so Yudhishthira and all the Pandavas, they leave the tent. And on the 10th day, their main plan was to surround Bhishma and to reroute the Kaurava army and keep Shikhandi in front of Arjuna. And on that day, the 10th day, Bhishma fought so hard, so hard, but the Pandavas fought very hard also. And they routed all of the Kaurava army, tried to take them away from Bhishma. And at one moment, nobody was looking. And Arjuna, Lord Krishna says, now Arjuna places Shikhandi in front of Bhishma. Bhishma drops his weapons. And Arjuna from behind keeps shooting at Bhishma. And Bhishma is so happy. He said, these are the weapons of my Arjuna. I know, I can feel it. Meanwhile, Arjuna is burning because he's shooting arrows at Bhishma. But he kept shooting, kept shooting, kept shooting. And he kept shooting. And all of a sudden, after thousands and so many, many arrows were shot, Bhishma fought from his chariot, but he doesn't fall on the ground. He falls on a bed of arrows. And when Bhishma falls on that bed of arrows, everyone stops. Everyone stops because they are in disbelief. How can Bhishma Charya fall? How can he fall? 
it, 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 you know, it's easier to imagine that there won't be a sun one day or there won't be a moon for two weeks or there won't be rains forever. But for Bhishma to fall, nobody could believe it. They put down their weapons, they put down their arms, they, they knelt down before Bhishma to pay him due respect and everyone was just broken because the warrior fell. Drona couldn't believe it. He just couldn't believe his eyes. And everyone looked at each other. And it is said that there were swans that came when Bhishma laid in the bed of arrows. And he looks around and he says, I need a pillow. And everyone's trying to bring him a certain pillow. And he says, Arjuna, get me a pillow. And Arjuna shoots three arrows and puts it under Bhishma. And Bhishma gets a pillow of arrows. And he looks at everybody and he says, there's no, Duryodhana wants to try to heal him, to get people to heal him. He says, it's no point. This is where I belong. I belong on this bed of arrows. And later he becomes very, very thirsty. He says, get me some water. And people tried to bring him water, but he said, no, tell Arjuna. And Arjuna, he shoots some arrows and a fountain comes, go, and it goes right into Bhishmacharya's mouth. He says, this is the water that I need. I am at peace in my bed of arrows. And everybody leaves in utter disbelief. The Kaurava army is completely crushed and the Pandava army is delighted but also crushed. And it is on this 10th day that Sanjaya runs back to Dhritarashtra and gives him this news. And that's how the recap starts. Now, what happens after Bhishma falls? And what, what is meant by this bed of arrows? And how do they move on? That we will see next week. Okay? So this week, we will stop with the fall of Bhishma. Hmm? All right. So... Sanjaya, you know, is a minister to Dhritarashtra. Hmm? Sanjaya was Dhritarashtra's minister. That was what's his relationship. Okay. All right. I'm going to say the closing prayer. Then what I will do is I'll just make one announcement and then I will answer all the questions that are coming. Okay. Om Purnamada. Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vashishate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Pyo Namaha Harihi Om mm -hmm.